Hey, Barbie. Yeah. How old are you? Um, do you remember Czechoslovakia? Czechoslovakia. 31? Yeah, oh. I was alive for that. It's time what? To learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. We have reached. Wait, we didn't know how, lo how old he was. Starting with a C, the Czech Republic, which technically just changed its English. Who? What do we know about the Czech Republic? The Czech Republic has a lot. I have been there. Has like one of the most beautiful capitals, Prague, in the world. Has very cheap beer, and um, the women are very, very hot. That's what I know about the Czech Republic. Oh, and uh, and like they have like they also have Sigmund Freud, which is a Danish uh, person. Uh, is buried in a church in Prague. Which that's what I know about Czechia. them, really. You mean that place in Russia with all the problems? No, that's Chechnya. Didn't you say that was that thing on the Croatian yep. flag? No, that's the Czechy. King me. No, that, that's Czech. <laughs> to C5? No, no, that's chess. You mean Big Buford Burgers? No, that's the restaurant. I know we were once invaded. Oh, get fucking dunked on Czech Republic. Uh. Isn't that the thing with the hotel? No, that's a Czech in Danny Tanner? Okay, let's start this episode. Yeah, no one knows shit about the Czech Republic. I remember when I was in Czechia, um, a girl who was with, I asked her uh, if she knew where the Czech Republic was. And then she could she she did not know where the fuck that was on a map, and that just that just gave me like that whole, like nobody knows like anything about geography in this world. Ah, uh, Czech Republic, you're like the heart of Central Europe, the bridge between East and West. First of all, the country. That's actually true. Um, a lot of people from Czechia actually like want to be more like called Central European, but in my opinion, they're Central European. Um, but a lot of people see them as more like Eastern European, but in my opinion, I believe they are central. The is located in Central Europe, landlocked, surrounded by Germany, Poland, Slovakia, and Austria. The country is divided into 13 regions, with the capital city of Prague centrally located in the Such a good city, such country. a good city. Now here's the thing, the Czech Republic kind of has a strong sense of regionalism. If you've ever heard the word Bohemia, or yep. Bohemian, regardless you of for, you the for. context behind the word is used to connotate a Slavic geographic location and people group, <laughs> it's referencing this general area of the Czech Republic. Yep. However, be careful you do not call uh, it uh, it's it's more. only us like it's only us like Hoi Four players who know where most countries are on the map. That's true. That's true. Or if you play EU Four or like other like and like um or maybe Crusader Kings or something like nobody just knows where the fuck things are on a map. It's so wild. Like, have you guys ever been to a geography class and then like some person has been like, where does can anybody name where like fucking uh, Paris is on a map? Like everybody can name that Paris is in France, but nobody knows where it is on a map. Like to me, that's mental that nobody can find anything and especially like stuff like the Czech Republic nobody knows where the fuck that is people know where Germany is probably France maybe USA prop with a high probability yeah but stuff like like Austria maybe no no and dude I'm on the king in German class I'm, I'm, same same I was everybody asked me where the fuck things were on the fucking map it's fucking mad like yeah, nobody can find anything the on the map entire eastern part of the country this is because the Czech Republic is kind of made up of three distinct regional identities that are kind of competitive with each other in addition to Bohemia there's Moravia and little Silesia who kind of oh Moravia yeah yeah, yeah. to Poland and Czechia although there isn't a distinct line of division generally Moravia is located here with these three regions overlapping as Czech Silesia dominates the small area in the upper east corner of the mm -hmm. country also due do not refer to Czechia as an Eastern European yep, country. Yeah, thank you very much. Central Europe. Otherwise, the Czech Republic doesn't really hold on to any external territories. I mean, they technically leased out three ports in Hamburg. Although they aren't considered exclaves, they're used as free ports for trade. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool that they, 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 they could, they're able to like lease out ports. Like, I, I, I would just say like, being in the EU is one of the most meta fucking things you can probably be at this point. Like, imagine being like so good friends with Germany, they could just lease a port. Like, that's so fucking meta. Uh, no. Landlocked. These ports maybe, maybe, maybe to Germany, if, though, after this moment. By the way, for current relevancy purposes, full disclosure, I'm going to intermix calling the country Czechia and Czech Republic throughout this video, so you'll never know which one I'll call it next. It's like a mystery game. The Ooh. second and third largest cities, Brno and Ostrava, can be found in the regions of Morava and Silesia. Wait. The second and third largest cities, Brno and Ostrava, can be found in the region. Wait. Have... Yeah, I've been here. I'm pretty sure I've been here. Wait, is the no? That's not. Wait, is that this pro? Like, I'm pretty sure I've been here. Like this. That's the statue of um of a uh, Yan Hus, and then yeah, you could sit and then like look up at the church right here. Like there was like some another monument right over here, uh, like down down there. Um, and then we came from this this way 
Uh, and there's like a um, a a finish shop somewhere in, up there. Yeah, I've been there. I've been I've been there. Of Morava and Celestia and competition between Prague, Burgo, but it, it and Ostrava, um, I, I don't know. Have I? Like, if this is there, it looks like so much like the same statue that's in in Prague. And the same. Is this tech for the right? Because the I don't know. Morava maybe maybe I'm just maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Between Prague and get yeah, I will, I will. in a friendly way, but you know, in a don't push my buttons and I won't stab you friendly way. The funny thing is, there ah, really like uh, Swedish and Norwegian Danish country. relationships I mean, between Sweden. Kind of end and then it becomes countryside like right away. Speaking That's cool. Countryside. Let's talk about the landscape and stuff now, shall we? Okay, so just being completely upfront, the Czech Republic may not be the most forest-ridden country in Europe. A lot of the land outside of urban centers is tilled and irrigated in oh. irregularly shaped crop fields. The country only has four national parks. However, with whatever nature zones they do have, they go all out. I Damn, mean, those look beautiful. The Narnia movies were filmed here. Lit. First of all, oh. if you look at Czechia from space, you'll notice that the entire country is kind of shaped like a bowl encased by mountains on all sides. This oh. makes the country a perfect drainage basin for various rivers like the Elbe. Vukava, yeah, that was really good um, when like water so resources kind of run out in like a hundred years. Hills and low mountains that speckle the country with the occasional forest and classical Bohemian and Moravian castle perched on the summit. So beautiful. Let's take some time to appreciate it. Oh. Oh shit! That's actually that pretty beautiful. Small desert that's barely like a kilometer wide. And Otherwise, most how the fuck is there a desert in Europe? What? Most of the country is kind of flat with small undulations here and there, loaded with barley and wheat fields. Don't be fooled though. Barley and wheat, although good for bread and cereals, is important Beer. for the crown prize Beer. commodity that usurps Beer. all other Czech products. Beer. You could pretty much a beer is the same price as water in fucking Czechia. Like I remember. Again, I'm not a beer drinker. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a beer drinker. But my friend Bjorn, we the when we went down into like a, a a beer cellar, we could practically buy like a fucking liter of beer for like pre I think it was like two euros. Like it was like a private place, right? So I think that's why it was so cheap. I don't know about the cheap everywhere, but my god, man, that shit. It was cheap. I even I had to buy a beer just to like because it was cheap. Like I I don't like it. I just like had to wash it. I bought I bought a bottle of wine and then like a liter of, of beer and then I just kinda like drank beer, drink a wine, drank beer, drank wine, and then to like, you know, um get the real the bad taste. Uh, oh yeah. Uh desertification. Damn straight man. Yes. Beer. The Czech take beer very seriously. You yeah, thought the Germans and Irish had a heavy beer culture. You there's a reason again. I am um, again. I heard like a story right that a lot of Czechs when they go to um like because they really really like fucking beer and uh, like beer fanatics when they went to um when they go to America and try American beer they say it's probably like the worst thing they've ever tasted because they're so used to, like the high quality beer they get from um get in Czechia. Obviously, have not met a Czech mate <laughs> no but Good seriously joke. the czech republic has the highest beer consumption per capita than any other country in the world at around one i'm impressed that's, it's more than denmark per year nonetheless driving while drunk is a serious crime with incredibly harsh punishments they obviously take the policy with almost zero tolerance so just remember when in czechia keep your drunken fights and mental breakdowns where they belong at home with your family or at a pub because a lot of motherfucking fucked up people go to pubs when they're drunk or, uh, AKA this guy. <laughs> Speaking of family, a favorite pastime that many Czech families have is going mushrooming, in which they go out for hikes and pick wild edible. Fucking Hellwitch, the third side at the them fuck? Bring them back home to cook. The Czech economy is really heavily centered around industry and manufacturing, yeah. though. Even in EU4, the they have a lot of that. Department. Car production alone makes up about 18% of all exports and employs millions across the country. Let's talk more about wild. the employees now, shall we? In a nutshell, the Czech Republic is the most stable and prosperous of the post-communist states of Europe. First oh, of all, no, the no, has does not, that does not make me, like, literally, like, I think every single country in some sense of the world, you can usually see, um, like, some kind of, like, uh, not, like, Soviet, Soviet things. When I was in, uh, in Hungary, like, we saw that, like, I was in Budapest, and also, like, in, um, I think that's pretty much right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you kind of see some things, and, like, oh, the museums and all that, like, sometimes there's some buildings as well. Um, but when I was in, in, in Prague, like, I saw barely any of that, like, it was just beautiful bu bu uh, building, beautiful building, beautiful building, beautiful building, and then, like, we had to go, like, when we were in train ride riding in, sometimes we saw, like, some, some Soviet, like, stuff when we were, like, on the way there. People ...and has the lowest unemployment rate in all of the European Union. That's wild. When it comes to ethnic makeup, things are kind of weird and hilarious, because officially, there's a huge group of undeclared people. Although by all huh? reasonable statistics, over 90% of the country is ethnically Czech, although only 65% of the country deliberately identifies as Czech, where 25% is unspecified. 
Does that probably maybe Moravians? Like maybe maybe they have like their own little thing? Moravians maybe? Or like the little Polish thing? I would guess a lot of Poles live there as well. Like it's on the border, right? The reason is because in the sense is they left nationality as an optional item to check off and a ton of people in the country just kind of dismissed that part. Whereas oh. the rest of the country either identifies as Moravian yep. or Slovak that... or other. The largest groups being Ukrainians and surprisingly mm. Vietnamese. Yeah, apparently Czechia is a hotspot for the Vietnamese. Oh! Who would have guessed? Of course, Czech is the official language, a Slavic-based tongue that is mutually intelligible to the Slovaks across yeah, the Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. They could pretty much understand each other kind of understandable to the poles so it's kind of like um well well let's say like the swedes and the norwegians they're kind of like the i guess the czechs and the slovaks and then the Dan denmark is like uh, the poles right because we can still kind of understand each other um so yeah okay that's actually pretty cool Interesting thing is that i was gonna say again the polish flag and the czech flag is almost the same you know a little bit of like color difference right but the biggest difference is like as you can see here is like the little like blue triangle here i also say the czech flag is so much better than the polish uh, czech is the only language that uses the air letter that makes the tr sound hey, i'll That's let cool. this guy explain the actual letter itself is pronounced ash but when you see that it sounds like chinese pinion with like the that little like uh uh whoa like whoa like uh, that literally looks like chinese it's pinion it's pronounced differently. You don't see here Ersh Eka. This means river, by the way. Instead, it's pronounced Zeka. One thing that absolutely sets the Czech apart, though, would have to be. Oh, that's isn't. Yeah, isn't that the uh, astronomical uh, watch? Uh, I've been. I've seen that. I've seen that. It's both classical, baroque, and gothic elements with ornate colonnades embellishing the foyers and corridors. I think I know why they did this, is because they couldn't make the video fucking 10 minutes long, or like 8 minutes long, which kind of has to be now, and that's wh why they did all this. Home to a plethora of world-renowned composers, artists, and even one Nobel Prize literature winner, the Czechs hold their ground in culture. Long story short, like almost every other country in Europe, the Czechs have a long history of complex kingdoms, empires, duchies, reformations, alliances, battles, yep. unions, revolutions, splits, and even for a while being part of the Eastern Bloc. But basically, all you really have to know is that through it all, they've still retained their unique sense of national... Still to make it in Yeah, they still did. So, but again, Edmund is not that bad. Hockey. They also have an interesting sense of diplomatic identity, such we will discuss in. Czechia once again has a long history with its neighbors that takes too it's long to 10 explain, minutes, Slovenia, Germany. It, as part of the former Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Czechs still retain quite a close tie to Austria and Hungary, even oh. after the dissolution of the empire in the early cool. 20th century. But then we get to little Liechtenstein. What? Liechtenstein had a few problems with castles and land that they used to own in the area and for a while didn't even recognize the country as legit until 2009 when they were finally That's... like, eh, f That, what? What? Liechtenstein? What? Fine, whatever. In general, they are good friends with the Visegrad group of countries, Poland, Slovakia, and Hungary. These countries have incredibly good business and governmental cooperation. Their best friend would have to be, hands down, though, Slovakia. They're more than just friends. They're basically Damn like conjoined twins that were separated at the head back in the 90s. It was the most peaceful split, and to this day, Czechs and Slovaks will always walk hand in hand. In conclusion, That's the Czech fucking Republic wild, is like man. the Slavic brother that grew up, got a job, and kind of only reluctantly shows up to family reunions when it's really absolutely necessary stay tuned denmark is coming hey next. denmark i already watched that one but again i really like this man this was kind of kind of fun like i love this like little short videos stuff like that when he makes those